Brothers and sisters, last Friday we spoke about the story of Urwa ibn Zubair, which is summarized to the following. He was on a journey from Medina to Sham. After an invitation from Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik, who was the caliph, the head of state. And during that journey, he lost two precious things, Urwa. His leg was amputated and he lost his dearest son after he was kicked by a horse. And the only thing he said was that we have experienced difficulty during this journey. And this was given as an example for rida, contentment with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. We said that contentment is a state in which the heart submits to the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal fully. Accepting everything from Allah with no objection. Whether it is something that is good or perceived to be evil. Noting that being saddened when we're afflicted or we're, when a, a hardship befalls us does not contradict rida. Because the Prophet wasallam, when he lost his son Ibrahim, he was saddened. He cried. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna al qalba la hazan, wa inna al ayna la tadma, wa inna ala firaqika ya Ibrahim la mahzunun. My heart is saddened, and my eye sheds tears, and I am indeed grieved for your departure, O Ibrahim. This was stated by the person who achieved. The highest level of rida, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So there is no contradiction between being saddened and being content with the decrees of Allah. What are the benefits? What are the fruits one gains from realizing contentment, achieving rida? First and foremost and most important is servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. Fulfilling servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. Contentment is submitting to Allah's decree. While servitude is fully submitting to Allah willingly with full love to Allah Azza wa Jal and His commands. As Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi stated, so the more you achieve rida, contentment, the more you fulfill servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two is that you gain the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى Whoever is content will gain the pleasure of Allah. And this is reported by a Tirmidhi, classified as sound by Al Albani. Number three, is that one feels satisfied. He doesn't need any more. He doesn't need anything else other than the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is also reported by a Tirmidhi classified as sound by Al-Albani. He said, be content with whatever Allah decrees for you. You'll be the richest of people. You'll feel that you have everything that you need. Why? Because whatever Allah Azza wa Jal decreed for you is all that you will get. So when you're content, you feel that you got it all. You have it all. So you feel the satisfaction in your life. You wouldn't be longing for more and other things. More of the same thing or other things. Number four is a very important point. Is that it will cleanse your heart from spite and envy. 
When you're content, you would not care what other people possess. You would not look at people's bounties or blessings Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon them. You wouldn't care and therefore you wouldn't envy them because you're satisfied with what you have. You're content. So you wouldn't envy. The heart is cleansed. It's purified. And it also cleanses the heart from shirk. When you're content, you realize that feeling other than Allah or placing your hope in other than Allah Azza wa Jal will not change anything. And therefore, you establish firmly the belief that Allah and only Allah is the source of benefit and harm. So you won't associate in your heart because the most dangerous deed that can destroy the slave are the deeds of his heart. As Ibn al-Qayyim said, the deeds of the heart are more destructive than what's uttered or practiced by the limbs. Another very important benefit is that it rida reassures the heart. When Allah decrees something, being content makes your heart firm. It does not make you give in to the whispers of shaitan. Had you done this, this would have happened. And then you weaken. And then you might reach a level, or some people do, when they're tested, some commit suicide. Why? Because they're simply not satisfied. They're not content. So their hearts do not remain firm. And they weaken. What are signs, how do we recognize that we are content or not? Some of the scholars said that when you do not care whether you're afflicted with something that is good or when, whether the decree is something that is good or something that is perceived as evil, then this is a sign that you're content. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi alayhi said, I wake up in the morning and I have no joy in anything else but the qadr of Allah. Meaning whatever comes from Allah, I am happy. And this is the only thing that I hope for, is the decree of Allah. Meaning I don't think beyond that. I don't go beyond that, whether it's good or evil. Another thing is, and this is a bit hard, but it takes effort to gain reward. When the decree involves other people, someone harmed you. Number one, it's a decree of Allah. Their harm to you is decreed. So you remember that. Now, a sign of contentment, they said, is to pardon and forgive. Because striving to retaliate and get back at others. And this is, they put some beautiful words. They say, uh, it puts out that light which contentment illuminates in your heart and it turns the sweetness of satisfaction with the decree to bitterness of re to the bitterness of revenge another sign is not 
being persistent in asking people's help. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, لا يسألون الناس الحافة. They do not persistently ask people for help. Now this again does not oppose asking people for help. What this means is that you don't become a source of burden for the people you're asking help from. You're looking for a job, so you go to brother so-and-so. Brother, I'm looking for a job, this is my CV. Okay, give me a week. Next morning you call him, did you do anything? Uh, brother, give me a week. And half an hour later, brother, uh, did you get a chance to do anything? Next morning, until you become a source of trouble and disturbance to the person you're seeking help from, now that is a sign that you are not content with what is going on. Persistently seeking help to the point that you become a source of disturbance to others. How do we achieve contentment? And that's important to know. I want to be content. How do I do that? One very helpful issue is reading the stories of those who were content. It motivates you to imitate them and follow into their footsteps. Just like such a story of Urwa, which was mentioned. Another thing that helps is to remind yourself that your reaction to the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal will not change it. Being content or not being content is not going to change. In other words, if I'm not content, that's going to change it from this path to this path. No, it's not going to happen. So our reaction doesn't change the decree. Remind yourself with this. That will help you become content. Next point is, and, and especially when it is something that's perceived to be evil, to repeat, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. Because the essence of this is servitude, full submission to Allah. I belong to Him, He does what He wants, He does what He wills. And I'm happy. So it will remind you with contentment. Another point is that we always need to remind ourselves that no matter, no matter how difficult things are, there are people who are going through much worse than what we are. The continuation of the story of Urwa is one such example. After Urwa left from the presence of Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik, a man from the tribe of Abs, which inhibited the central part of the Arabian Peninsula, walked in to the presence of Al-Walid, and he was blind and his face was damaged. So Al-Walid asked him about his story. What happened? What caused this? He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I don't know of any person from the tribe of Abs who possessed wealth more than I did. And in one night, me and my family settled in a valley only to be surprised with a flood that by the beginning of the day had killed everything and everyone, all my wealth, all the animals were killed and my wife, my, my wife, my children, my relatives, everybody was killed. And the only thing I was left with is a newborn and a camel that was very difficult to control. 
So as I started to walk with him and the infant, it ran away. So I put my infant down and started running towards that camel and suddenly I heard a cry from my child. I turned around and the wolf was eating it. It had its head, his head in its mouth. So I lost hope in its survival. So I continued to run after my camel until I reached it. And before I knew it, it took me by surprise, then kicked me straight in the face. It damaged my face and blinded me. So Al-Walid said, convey this to Urwat ibn Zubayr, so that he would know that there are others who went through much worse than he did. Rahimahullah. So the story, the, the point here is that we always need to remember that if I am afflicted one fold, there are others that who are afflicted a hundred folds, a thousand folds worse than I am. And that will help you be content with the decrees of Allah. Remind yourself with the saying of, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, this is reported by Muslim. Allah Azza wa Jal does not decree anything for the believer except for that which is good for him. When we remember this, we expect what's good from Allah. We, have, we will have good thoughts of Allah. Why? Because we simply have no knowledge of the future. We don't know what the consequence of this decree is. So when we have positive thoughts of Allah, when we think good of Allah, when we expect the best from Allah, that will help us be content with the decrees of Allah. Contentment, brothers and sisters, is something that soothes the heart. It makes you lead a very comfortable, relaxed, beautiful life. Because you simply put your affairs with Allah and entrusted Him with it. And you have full confidence that whatever comes is the best for me. And therefore, depression, for example, will never find its way to your heart. It will never find its way to your heart. Why? Because you simply have no reason to become depressed over something you trust is the best for you. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to purify our hearts and to make us content with His decrees and to enable us to ask Him for contentment over and again. Allahumma inna nas'aluka